Chair Huntsman and Commissioners. Uh, I'd just like to reiterate the 630, the C31, and the aesthetics have really been met by this particular design. Um, essentially, the C31 was drafted over 40 years ago, and at that time it allowed a use permit for exceeding 7,500 square feet. It's been looked at in 1996, 1998, and the new revision says a use permit over 5,000 square feet, but it never said, no, it can't be done. It's been looked at four times. It's always been thought in certain cases and with very tough findings, yes, a store of this size could fit within the C31 where it could have been taken out. The remaining use permits are essentially for what's already happening. Alcohol is already there. Um, the driveways, we're actually cutting down our driveways from nine to four, and so that's actually an improvement, but they are in College in Claremont, and that's the only way into the store. And the fourth one is to have a grocery store. Well, we're a grocery store. The minor variances are to have less than three loading docks, to have two, and to have two less parking spaces. So essentially, it fits within the community. Um, as I listen to the comments um, and the proposed alternative design, it sounds like what the neighborhood is asking for is the opposite of C31, an area that is, the no project continues to be a large parking lot, an unfriendly street. I, if you look on this side of, on the opposite side of college where Safeway is now, there is no reason to cross the street. With the new design, it's going to create an excitement and an energy where people are going to want to go to both sides of the street. The smaller stores will do well. Um, just briefly on the Conley study, the Conley study was a strategy plan on how the city of Oakland would spend its money um, to increase retail. It specifically said in the Rockridge area, there did not the city didn't need to spend its money uh, to bring in more new grocery stores. So essentially, you saw just uh, the aesthetics. You saw that it fits in size with every building on all four sides of it. We'd argue that it doesn't need aesthetics and um, and less and um, and C31 and uh, the other arguments that were made are as the chair said, are clearly going to be raised as we move forward in the CUP. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ripley. So at this time, I'm bringing it back to the initial. If you'd like to get started, Commissioner Zayas Mark. Um, I won't add much more than was said. I just wanted to underline a couple of things. Um, I think I would like to suggest that a project alternative to include um, a mixed-use scenario with a modest amount of senior housing, which was mentioned today, um, would be a good idea. Um, I would I'd like to uh, emphasize to include bicycle and pedestrian plan, and in particular, um, how to ameliorate any negative um, effects along uh, College Avenue, uh, the you know the sidewalk activity there. Um, you know, perhaps looking at uh, alternative ways of coming in and out of the, of the store in terms of um, Parking, parking lot, and uh, the transit used to be fully considered, and if there are any issues with um, toxic, um, you know, remediation of, of soil because of a, a gas station, that should be looked at too. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Chair Huntsman. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it's uh, very enlightening to hear everyone's points of view. Um, I believe you all have discussed the issues that need to be included. Um, the one that I would love to see studied is what if we took the parking entrance off of College Avenue completely and put all vehicle access off of Claremont, um, see how that affects things. Um, the other thing I'm curious to know is the parking ratio is, I think it's 173 total parking places. Um, I'd like to see some study of the sufficiency of the parking compared to the size of the store. And if there's any way in the EIR, and I don't know if there's a way to do this, to look at the demand of those parking spaces over time, to see if there's periods of the day or evening when there's excess capacity. And my thought here is that it would potentially take cars off the street at certain, certain times of the day when people are trying to go to other 
stores in on the College Avenue uh, neighborhood, which my understanding is that the parking will be available to everyone, not just people that are going to sit. Uh, I totally support pedestrian safety <clears throat> and bike safety and bike parking lot um, reviews. I also support uh, in the air quality section the truck deliveries um, and to look at uh, how the, the impact on air quality would uh, be remediated if, if all truck deliveries were required to be done, what I believe is in a covered parking, a uh, covered uh, loading dock, which is, I believe, what I've been told the loading docks on the back are going to be covered. Um, and let's see. I did meet, just out of full disclosure, I did meet with Safeway and their representatives, and I did meet, meet with Mr. Flashman um, from RCPC. Uh, I had the ability to air my grievances about Safeway to Mr. Paradise in terms of quality and uh, 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 and number of items that are available at the various stores. So if you can't find lamb in your store, go tell Mr. Paradise. I'm sure he'll let his management know that you'll be able to get lamb after midnight in certain locations. I could guarantee you if there's a 50,000 foot store, you'll probably be able to get 12 kinds of lamb. Um, and other than that, uh, just uh, thanks staff and uh, thank the community for being here. And I look forward to this item coming back. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I really do. I, I, you, you may think that this can create a headache. It, it does just because you have to pay attention so carefully and I'm sure you're actually hearing what everyone says, but um, that's why we get paid the big bucks up here is to uh, make these decisions. So uh, we'll see you guys again in a short order.